How's it going people? Welcome back to AFTV. There's been some big news around the takeover from Daniel Ek this weekend. On Saturday he released a statement via his Twitter account. I'm going to read out that statement now and then we're going to get the opinions of the guys Cecil and James in the building. The statement reads, Inaccurate reports emerged today saying I have not made a bid for Arsenal Football Club. I think it's important to correct the record. This week an offer was made to both Josh Kroenke and their bankers that included fan ownership, representation at the board and a golden share for the supporters. They replied that they don't need the money. I respect their decision but remain interested and available should that situation ever change. So big news around the takeover, the bid has come in. Initial thoughts, uh, if you can take yourself back to Saturday, James Cecil and when the news first broke, what did you think? Go on, Cess, you go first. Cause. Um, I'm quite happy how open he's being. I've got to give him that. Fair play. He said he, he, said he was going to um, be very open as well. If he gets the club, he's going to have the fans involved. And have, make it, give us back the club, basically, if he becomes the owner. So I was quite, I'm impressed with how open he's been. Um, this golden share thing for fans, that, uh, that's the thing that sticks out to me. I don't know if that was something that was in his first proposal when he, when he was planning to make the bid. That'll be very interesting if he's going to stick to that, especially with the consortium as well, obviously Thierry Henry, Bergkamp and, and um, Vieira. It'd be very intriguing to see he's going to have an, a golden share as well for the fans as well. It'd be very interesting how that he's going to go about that. But again, I'm happy that he's done it. I'm happy he's, he's made the bid. I'm happy he's let us know that he's made the bid because I thought it would have been done all in private. But I'm glad he's told us that he has done it. But I'm also annoyed that it's been declined and the arrogance of the Kroenke saying we don't need the money. Yeah. Like that. That just annoys me, if I'm honest. Okay, it's a very arrogant response. Um, I'm happy that Daniel X is going to keep trying and we're going to be rallying behind him and keeping the pressure on the Cronkays in the protests and so forth. But yeah, man, uh, it's just annoying. It's annoying. It's another step. It's not a step back, but it's just like a, it's a halt. And that's just, it's frustrating because I want this club to be with a new owner. But it's um, not a surprise. I think we mm. can't be surprised here. I think we all thought that the initial bid will be rejected and they I didn't will be you know fight. well even Daniel X said it'll be a long journey it'll be a long journey but I didn't expect it to be to be, be accepted I I think this is the perfect time for for the Cronkies to sell the club is in deterioration yeah, I, I think that. it's yeah. the it's at the lowest value it can be and he's offering I'm hoping he's offering more I don't know we don't know the exact figure but if he's smart he'll offer more because the club's at its lowest like I said it's at its lowest figure right now and I thought yeah, they would really entertain it. I really did. I thought it was all a bluff saying we're not ready to sell. We're not going to sell. I thought it was a bluff just to get the price up. So it's actually, it's, it's annoying and it's also hurtful because I want the club to be sold. I, I'm tired of the Cronkies. I mm. really am. And I'm sure you all are as well. But it's going to be a long battle. And I hope, like he said, he's going to continue pushing to try and get the club bought. Um, and we will, like I said, we'll be rallying right behind him. Yeah, we have to. James? Mm. It's a really interesting position the Cronkies find themselves in because take all the emotion out of it and what they've done with the club. Let's just talk about them as human beings and businessmen, right? You've got this asset that has almost doubled in value since they bought it. Um, and let's face it, it's been in decline. The club's been in decline for a long time with some moments that, you know, appease the fans and stuff. They spent a lot of... Uh, sorry, I say they spent a lot of money. They haven't spent a lot of money. But there's been a lot of surprising transfers by the Cronkies, like the Partey one, like the yeah. Pepe one. Ones that you think, oh wow, okay, maybe they are showing a degree of ambition here. I think this is where you look at them as they're not football people. And you know, you hear, well, the Cronkies sanctioned Thomas Partey. And you're thinking, okay, well, thanks, but am I meant to be grateful? Because yeah. we're still miles from where we needed to be. And almost football people would have recognized that we're not looking for like your charity and just a bit of like the odd bit of help here and there. You want you to show ambition. Yeah. It just so happens to be that spending money on new players equals ambition. Um, so where are they in this weird situation where a bid's been made? You know, they've rejected it because they don't need the money. But the club and the fans and everyone's kind of in uproar at the moment as to what's been going on with the Super League. Pandemic might have played a part. They've not had the income. Mm -hmm. I think this is the perfect time for them to sell, but also... It's if this is gonna sound really weird, right? It might also be the perfect time for them to invest. Like, mm. let me just go I, on, I, finish. Right, no, just, go on, go on. Well, what I mean by that is, if you're the Cronkies, and we actually spoke about this before, if you're the Cronkies, you're thinking, well, we do want to. I, be, I believe they. I don't believe they want to sell Arsenal. I believe if they do, it'll be because they see it as a sensible business decision. So I believe they want to keep Arsenal. 
So there are situations where they're like, well, the fans hate us and there's pressure to sell. So knowing that there's kind of 1.8 billion waiting for us, why don't we invest in the team? Big money, because we're going to talk about the reports in a bit, but there's reports everywhere that the, the Cronkies are going to mm. seriously invest mm. this summer. Give it a go. If things get better, great. If we can turn our reputation around, great. And then if it's not really happening, we realise we're not right for this, you sell for 1.8 billion. And you know what? If you go back to Daniel Ek in a year's time and he's not there, actually, what does that tell the fans? Listen, don't believe everyone you hear. Yeah. Don't believe every billionaire. Because here we are actually putting money into it. But the minute we're ready to sell, this guy's going to walk. Yeah. So I yeah. think it actually puts the Cronkies in a very kind of fascinating position where weirdly they could come out of this all right in the end do you get what i'm trying to say like it, it's kind of well fans are fickle as well so you know a yeah. few signings and a managerial change and, and you know finishing top four i'm sure you'll hear less of the cronke name than you we are now how, 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 how possible is how possible is that to happen though for them to invest well, a I'm, load I'm gonna of money into signing listen, a i'm gonna look at liverpool and then top four in in a season i'm gonna look at liverpool as the main example yeah, and cool. liverpool's owners are not great owners let's get this out there they've won the league and champions league in the last few years but they've just got it right below them that's mm. something Kronk has never done got it right with the people he's left in charge of the club yeah. liverpool got it right with the people left in charge and klopp was that final piece he had mm. an asset in coutinho to sell and when you give a manager like klopp that money who brings in the name the respect mm. you can trust him and he done what he done with it but as you saw over the last season Liverpool fans and, and their relationship with their owner, it, it, it hasn't been mended over that time. It was just simply pushed less down the priority list because they're winning stuff. So for me, even though, yes, he could come out of the back end as maybe not a great owner, but an owner that's changed, I still don't trust him enough, regardless of him spending the money this summer or next summer and continue, because I just think that yeah. he's shown his hand already. I don't trust him at all. I just think there's actually, weirdly, two good options for him. Mm. You know, he doesn't have to spend the money and then think, you know what, now I'm stuck with this club. He's actually put himself in a position where he may, he may, as, he may as well just Give it a throw, throw everything he can at that it. That does make sense. See if it works. If it doesn't, all right, we'll sell. Thanks, I've doubled my value. Yeah. And as I said, if Mr. Daniel X is not there, you know, then what does that say to fans? We all wanted this guy, but he turned your back when it got a little bit hard. And that's a good position for the Cronky. Say, we are here. We do. And one thing I've always said about this whole Cronky out movement is not be careful what you wish for because it's been so bad under the Cronkies, but don't just take anyone just because they say, oh, I love the club and I used to watch them. So I think th this could be very interesting how it plays out. And I might be naive, and I know that they've always left us short, but part of me does think the Cronkies are going to invest this summer but because it's got so bad and they'll do it not because mm. they care about Arsenal but they'll do it as a PR exercise for them so if we were to pull off that 60 70 million pound player or a couple of 40 50 million pound players I think that will be down to them trying to fix the reputation either way though if it backs the manager then I don't care that's the only reason why does our focus it. change in no. terms no. of what they do okay no no, no way no, and that's not the message I'm trying to send. Yeah, no, I just wanted to yeah. ask, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I just think there's... Is it weird to say that Arsenal, in terms of ownership and kind of who's, how we're being looked after, might be going to this window in better shape than it has in quite a while? Because you've got owners who are seriously under pressure. And we've seen the petition that's gone out um, that obviously we're pushing on this channel. We've seen... You know, people speaking out, we've seen the protests. Mm. There's been, there's never been more incentive for the Cronkies, even if you're just looking at the on-field results, even if you're looking at the fact that they want Arteta to be a success, they don't want to be seen as wrong again in that. There's loads of reasons why they might go, we just need to throw money at this. And I don't think there's ever been a summer quite like that. Mm. Um, and then you look at, you know, um, I mean, like I said, when, em when Emery was back that summer, we got Pepe, Europa League final, missed out by a point on top four. You know, the, the consensus is probably, well, you know, he doesn't need that much more to get us over the line. Is With that, Arteta last year, the pandemic. I just is that, it's actually <sighs> infuriating me that it's a win-win for him, for Kroenke. It's infuriating me that he can invest. No, he's never going to invest 1.8 billion into players and whole re rip out of the club. And he can get money back at the end of the year. If it doesn't work, he'll be like, cool, I know. Daniel is probably going to be waiting there regardless. And if it does work for him, the price of the club goes up and you think, well, I want more money for the, for the, to sell it, which 
again then infuriates me even more like that's why i ask about the focus because it, regardless of like you said you are right it can be a win-win i just think we have to look at it from our perspective yeah you gotta get them out yeah. and not what it could be what we know is we was making top four and he failed to build on that what we know is he had a manager that we all trusted believed yeah, yeah. and loved and he failed to support him what mm-hmm. we know is that he hasn't got a clue about how to run a football club mm. So you are right, there could be a light at the end of the tunnel for us fans, even with Kronke remaining. Mm. But I think that we shouldn't fool ourselves off of this summer and what he does Never. under pressure. No, and that's why I said it'd be a really good PR exercise. I yeah. don't think anyone should sit here and if he somehow, I know Villa fans will kill me, if he somehow brought Grealish to the Emirates, you know, I don't think we turn around and suddenly say, wow, this is an owner, who cares? No, this is, you know... It's like you hear your friends going through problems with their partner, but then it's like, oh, everything's fine, he brought me flowers that night. It's like, hold on, this is kind of a bigger picture. Yeah. I don't think a couple signings should turn everything around um, and suddenly change our opinions on them. I'm just saying that the way this has kind of played out and the way it's kind of manoeuvred itself, we might be in a situation where we get a big spend from the Cronkies because the stars have aligned in that way. Things are falling into place to, in, to a position where they're thinking, this is kind of all we've got left. And you know what I like though? I think, me as well, I think every summer we move into wanting to spend big. Mm. This summer, I don't give a shit about spending. I want him gone. Right, yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, distracted. It was a higher aspiration. Yeah, and that's he, their yeah. fault. So if, even yeah. if they try to save themselves by doing what they should have done in the last 10 years, for me, it's too little too late. Yeah. And. You know, I was going to ask what to do next, but there's protests already planned on Sunday before the last game of the season against yep. Brighton at the Emirates mm. Stadium. That's 2 p.m. Emirates Stadium for everyone that's in and around the area. Come show your support, you know. Um, and, you know, banners, messages, all of that. Cronkay out, sell Arsenal, Ek in, whatever it is. Just make sure you're there if you can be. 2 p.m. Emirates, Sunday the 23rd of May big protest plan. It's the last chance we as fans have this season to get our message across. Any last yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I hope I've not given the impression that I'm like cronky in or anything. No, I no. I, what I want him to sell, I'm just saying it, it's, it's, it's just aligned in a very interesting way is what yeah. I'm saying. So um, I'm, I'm watching this with kind of my fan, the, the, the fan in me, kind of my heart saying, this is interesting. Mm. Okay, it's, you know, this is, sorry, I said that wrong. I'm saying this, uh, in my heart, I'm saying, get out, get out of my club. I want a better for Arsenal. But my head is saying, this is very interesting. Like, just watching it play out. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, nothing nothing long for the final thoughts. Just simple, um, just keep the message going regardless. Cronky out. You're going to be deceived by other things. The new kit's recently dropped. I know it's nice. We've all spoke about it. It's nice. It's not going to change much if you buy it on, if you don't buy it. But just let's keep the message Cronky out. Turn up to the protests. Sign the petitions. And hopefully... We might discuss this later on. Maybe don't turn up to one game next season or, yeah, well, next season. Or everyone just make a stand and not do that. Yeah. Let's get it where it hurts. And small changes still change. So anything you can do, please do it. Whether that's giving away your ticket, whether that's not buying merchandise, whether that's not subscribing to BT Sky and so on, not feeding the hands that feed the club. Let's remember this club is in the hands of an owner that's poisonous, that's let us rot this far. We don't want to feed him no more. We want our club back. And all of us can do something. We just got to make sure none of us are doing nothing. People, hope you guys have enjoyed the debate. Let us know the thoughts in the comment section below. Stan Cronkay out. <laughs>